Good morning to you all. It is February 2nd, 2023, and today is the 175th anniversary of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. To celebrate this, we will be talking about how the U.S. expanded off of Mexico, and for today, we will have the perspective of both parties. It all started in the Treaty of Guad Guadalupe Hidalgo that led to the U.S. expansion further west and south, climbing around 525,000 square miles. This ended American a Mexican-American war and got the U.S. more land. Now that's one sweet deal. This war lasted from 1846 to 1848. The reason they started fighting was over Texas, but in the end, the U.S. got more land and paid $15 million for a fourth of the country now. Fast forward to 1876, a president got into office, Portfolio Diaz. He thought it would be good for everyone for from a foreign country to put railroads, ports, and cities. Unfortunately, the people in Mexico, the natives, they suffered due to the businesses being easier to access from foreigners than those who were from Mexico. It really messed up the economy. By the early 1900s, the US had invested around $1 billion in Mexico. Right. The people in Mexico had enough of all these people coming in and making it on their own. So the Mexican Revolution took place. Portfolio Diaz was unseated in 1911. Unfortunately for the people of Mexico, a new leader by the name of Victoriano Huerta got power and dug the country a bigger grave. General Wilson wanted to teach South American Republicans to elect good men. Tensions were growing between these two countries. The U.S. Navy was detained in Mexico in a small port town. The Mexican general apologized for this inconvenience, but the U.S. commander thought that wasn't enough. He wanted a 21-gun salute to the U.S. flag. Huerta refused, so the U.S. decided to invade Veracruz and stop the shipment of German arms reaching to Mexico. 19 Americans and 200 Mexicans died, almost sparking the fire of, a, of another big war between these two countries. Fortunately for the agreement between the U.S., Mexico, Chile, Argentina, Brazil, they were able to avoid this costly war. Instead of helping his own people, Huerta helped the U.S. Embassy and foreign investors by protecting them and letting them grow. Eventually, Victoriano Huerta was assassinated in an overthrow of the government that left 10,000 Mexicans dead. Carranza was named the new president. He refused to accept the, to accept the help of the U.S. of forming a new government. President Wilson did not like that, so he, he sent support to Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa was the leader of a rebel army located in northern Mexico. Pancho Villa failed, so President Wilson stopped the support and recognized Mexico as a Carranza regime. Villa got upset, so retaliated with attacking Americans. Pancho killed 16 American engineers and another 17 in a raid in, on Columbus, Mexico, New Mexico. Wilson, without telling the Mexican government, sent 6,000 U.S. soldiers to deal with Pancho Villa and his 1,500 men army. They went hunting, but were never able to find them. Instead, Wilson made the choice to call those troops back and to help in World War I, which they just got into. And now we have two people with us. We have John and Jesus with us today. John was born in California. Meanwhile, Jesus was born in Michoacan. We have asked them both about what they think about the Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty 175 years later. First up will be John. I've got to say that this is fascinating, knowing that if the war had had a different outcome, I would have been born in a different country. Everything I know in my lifestyle would have been different. But even though California is no longer part of Mexico, some cultures stay here. Especially if you go more down south, the more you can see Mexican culture being displayed in every street. There's so much history left behind, and the U.S. took it. Some people stayed here to keep their culture alive. Next up, we have Jesus. Debo decir que es interesante ver una parte de California que los Estados Unidos nos impactaron. Tenemos Baja California, que es básicamente California, y ahora se pueden ver que los, gra los grandes comparaciones que viven en México están en busca de negocios. También México se ha debilitado debido a, a narcos que en realidad constituye una gran parte de nuestra economía. 
lo que da un poco de, me de miedo por decirlo lo menos. Well, this concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed and made sure to share this with your friends. Be sure to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. And according to YouTube statistics, only a small percentage of viewers are actually subscribed. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Okay, I'm, if it's hard right now, then oh, no, we're still getting, I'll keep on resetting. Getting it done. It's good right. warm up, warm up match. This is a warm up. All right, this is the one. All right. The reason they, they, God. Can we restart my part or? Uh, portfolio, portfolio, what? Diaz, is that it? Yeah, Portfolio Diaz the people of Mexico, a new leader by the name of Victoria, huh? I, you know, you know how to say that? Victoriano Huerta. Victoriano Wait, Huerta. Wait, what? Wait, well, hold up. It's in yellow. I can barely see it. Yeah, Huerta, Huerta. Victoriano Huerta. Uh, you mind if I change the color? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I can barely see that. Uh... All right. <clears throat> Good morning to you all. It is February 2nd, 2023, and today marks the 175th anniversary of I mean, hold on. I think I was a little too fast. Can I just like restart anytime and you could just 